And so let me read Acts 3:19, 20 and 21 quickly. Give you some definitions. And then we'll see what we need to do. Repent, therefore. This is what he wrote. In the week of our trauma, this is my word to you. Though you are traumatized now, I am coming with this. Repent and return. That your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things. Now, that should be plural. Periods, it's in Greek there, that's plural, until the periods of restoration. More than one, periods of restoration of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. I'm going to give you two phrases, and I'm going to break these two phrases down. Because he talks about seasons or times or periods of restoration, and then he talks about times of refreshing in these three verses. So there are four words in the Greek New Testament for time. Some of you probably heard me teach on this. If you've read many of my books, I love to talk about it. You've probably read about it. But if you don't understand these time words, you can completely miss what Holy Spirit is trying to say to us in a passage of Scripture. And the, some translations just mix it all up and just try to use these words as synonyms, but they are not synonymous at all. So the word for period or season or times of restoration is the word chronos. Many of you have heard it. We get chronology from it, chronological, because this is just time in general. Nothing strategic about it, nothing opportune about it. It's just a general season of time. General time, but often refer, refers to a season of time. So a chronos, just picture if I had a, you know, if I had both hands free, I'd hold the other one out here, and, and we'd say we, we have from here to here. Maybe it's 20 years, maybe it's 30 years, maybe it's a year, but starts here, ends here, that's a chronos. It's just general, it's routine. It's the time when the farmer has plowed the ground, planting the seeds, keeping the bugs out of it. It's not harvest yet. He's keeping the weeds down. He's watering it. It's, it's, it's not in the barn. It's not even, the fruit's not there yet. It's not strategic. It's not opportune. It's just the routine season. But how many of you know if you don't do that, you don't get this? It's what causes the 30, 60, 100 fold. It's not there yet, but you got to do something with the seed. So here's a chronos, and he says there are general seasons of restoration that have been taking place, and, we get, and God knows where he's taking this with restoration after restoration after restoration because this started in Genesis, and he knows where he's going to take things before Christ can come back. So the chronos, plural form here, chronoi of restoration is, the word restoration is a very significant Greek word, apokatastasis. And I don't really like restoration anymore because the word has been weakened because we've used it so much we don't get the fullness of what the word really means. But apokatastasis literally means to reconstitute something. So the constitution of something is the way it's made and the way it's supposed to operate or function. Constitution of an organization, that's the way you're supposed to operate. Constitution of your body, that's the way it functions. So when he puts oppo on it, he's redoing something. So he said, we're going through seasons where God is reconstituting things back to the way they're supposed to be. 
So God's not haphazardly doing this and that and wonder what I'll do next. God knows the end from the beginning. He declares the end from the beginning. He's always doing things for a reason, for a purpose. And history has been going through these seasons of restoration of all things, of reconstituting things back to the way they're supposed to be. And at the end of every one of those chronoi, in which he's reconstituting something, you always come to a window of opportunity. Just like the farmer. And that, of course, is Kairos. And if you're charismatic and you've been saved for any length of time, you don't know what Kairos is, I'm, I'm disappointed in you, that's all I can say. <laughs> But of course, kairos is not general time, it's strategic uh, or appointed or the best definition. Every good lexicon will use this word when defining kairos. Opportune time or a window of opportunity. Because just because the fruit is there and the harvest is in the field doesn't mean you're gonna get it. Somebody's gonna have to do something. You can lose it. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, you missed the kairos of your visitation. So that's why it's, it doesn't mean, the word doesn't mean guaranteed time, the word means opportune time. So in every chronos season, God has orchestrated things and, and by the way, this could be, I mean, this could be a month season of your life, God's doing this or that, he brings you to a little breakthrough point in Kairos and then you go on another, this could be a year, this could be 40 years, this could be 50 years. We talk history, we're talking longer seasons. But you always come then to a point in that Kronos season where it's time for breakthrough. It's not that God couldn't do it sooner, it's that he's working through people. And he has to do things, and he has to prepare the harvest, and he has to deal with the church, and he has to restore certain things, and he has to cause certain things to happen that we don't even like, you know, and pray and fast, and, well, if you, you know, he's just, I feel, sometimes, you ever feel sorry for God? He has to work through us. So, anyway. I don't really feel sorry for it, but. So he come, brings it to a point where, okay, now we're in the window of opportunity, the kairos. Kairos of what? Times of refreshing is that phrase. So in every chronos season, you come to an opportunity for Refreshing, but that's a weak translation also. And that's the Greek word anasuksis. And the root word suko means to blow or breathe. Ana either makes it repetitious, as in again, or intensifies it, or both. So a good literal translation of that word would be the blowing of the breath again intensely. The blowing of the breath again intensely. Now you have to, you have, you have to, you have to get in the setting, the context of this passage where it's just, you know, Peter, the, the man at the gate beautiful has just been healed and the whole country knows who he is and the word spreads to where in minutes thousands of people have gathered to the temple because he's running through the temple running and leaping and praising God and they all have seen this guy for 30 some years and flipped him pennies here and there and nobody can deny this miracle and Peter sees this the moment he starts preaching but he's trying to make a point to them that hey you remember just a few days back when you, you followed the sound of the tornado that blew through the city and ended up at the upper room and, and there you saw tongues of fire come to us and we were filled with the breath of God and we were revived, reborn, filled 
with his spirit, his breath, his life again. And you heard us speaking in languages known around the world. And 3,000 of you were born again when he's preaching to these people. And here's my summary. He was saying to them, that wind was not just for us. If you respond now the way you should, that wind will blow again today with great intensity. That's what he was saying. Because we've come through, we're in another one of these windows or God's going to reconstitute some things on the earth. Five thousand born again. 